TypeScript 5.6 is another feature packed update with some really nice quality of life developer experience features. And I wanna show you some of my favorite ones. Quickly before I do, I covered 5.5 as well as that had some really great features in it. So maybe 5.7 will have some noteworthy ones too. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with web dev news and content. But let's jump into TypeScript 5.6. The first one is a great quality of life one, and that is disallowed knowledge and truthy checks. Now on the left here, I have TypeScript 5.5 and on the right TypeScript 5.6. If I was to write a check in TypeScript here like this, so say I wanted to match my regex and if it does, we'll do something in here. Or you may notice if I've actually forgotten to do a dot test here, which means that this always has a truthy value here, which means it's always going to run this if block, making it a pretty useless if block. If I now copy this over to TypeScript 5.6, what you'll notice is it will throw us an error and it will say this kind of expression is always truthy. So it's now going to warn us when something like this is always truthy and it's going to disallow it as generally it's a pretty pointless check. The other ways that this will help you is if you write something like say you wanted x to be greater than or equal to zero. If I did it in this way instead, say I did x and then I accidentally created an arrow function before you'd only get the error of see that x here has never been declared. But if I move this over to this side, we should get an error that this is always truthy again. So you'd know there's another error there too. So the other side of this as well is that nullish check. And this is really cool too in this case. So you've got a function like this one is valid. And then you've got the value with the number and then the options of any. Say you were checking if the value is valid by doing if the value is less than the options dot max or 100. So you want 100 to be your default max value if a max value isn't passed in. Well, you may notice we've actually done the wrong check here. If I copy this over to TypeScript 5.6 and you'll see why. So it says the right hand or the right operand of this nullish check is unreachable because the left operand is never nullish. What it's saying is we're actually running if this is null, then 100. What we actually want to correct this code and do the right ordering is to wrap this all in brackets like so. So we're doing options.max and then the nullish on options.max because the way we had it before is it's actually doing the nullish operator here on this side of the equation, but this is always going to be a truthy value and it's never going to be nullish. So that's how you want to fix that there. And it's good that TypeScript is going to tell us in that case. This will also catch cases like like this say we use the function that we created up here with is valid here with this primary value and secondary value what you notice here is i'm checking is valid and then the primary value and then i'm giving a max of 100 and then i also want to check if it's valid for the secondary value and then only then do i want to run what's in this block but as you can see with this comment here what i've actually done is i've missed a closing bracket so i'm actually doing my is valid function first but then I'm doing the or statement within this is valid function or within this first one. And you can see that this side is never going to run because this or here is useless because this max 100 is always going to have a value and it's never going to hit that. So if I copy this over now onto TypeScript 5.6, we should see the error that it will print out. And there we go. It's printing out an error of that max 100 line there again, saying this kind of expression is always truthy. Now, a couple of things to note is it's never going to tell you this if you do something like if true. So if I go over to TypeScript 5.6, here it's not going to tell you if you do if true as that was probably on purpose if you do something like is false as well it's not going to warn you about that and the same goes for zero and one if you put anything else in there like two or anything like that it will tell you that kind of expression is always truthy obviously this is useful for cases where you do something like let's say while true and you obviously want that to actually work and not throw an error and the other case as well is if you have an if statement sometimes when you're developing you do something like this and then say you have another side here like that. So what you do when you're developing, sometimes you just want to skip one of the checks as you're debugging or something. So you set this to true. So it's not actually going to error you out on this. Obviously it's showing an error here because another doesn't exist, but it won't throw an error saying that this is a truthy check there as it's probably expecting that you've done this on purpose there. So that's really cool there. And that's the disallowed nullish and truthy checks. The next really cool one helps with the pattern that I'm sure all of us web developers have seen. But if we're in our code here on TypeScript 5.5, let's say we did something like import and then we import what's called a side effect import. This is called a side effect import because you're not actually importing anything from it. What you're doing is you're importing the file and hoping that code in there will run. Useful for polyfills or declaring globals or things like that. But the way you would have seen this in web dev is you usually import your CSS like this. Now, if we leave this, as you can see in TypeScript 5.5, it's not even warning me that test doesn't exist here and you can literally put anything here and it won't warn you. That's because in 5.5, the behavior is to silently ignore this. 
However, we go to 5.6 and we paste in this absolute random import. You'll see there that it will tell you that it cannot find the module or its corresponding type declarations. Now they have considered, obviously, if you do something like button.css and you were wanting to import the CSS. Now, the reason this isn't throwing an error, even though button.css does not exist in my code, is because I'm using V and V already comes with its own declarations. And it has a declaration here for declaring modules for any pattern matching a CSS. So if you aren't using V and you don't have this, you'd have to do your own declare module and then asterisk.css like this. And that way this wouldn't throw an error. But again, it's a really nice check there for checking if there's like a typo in your side effect imports or something as you've most likely done a side effect import on purpose. But sometimes you can mistype this, say if it was import button that was the actual module, but you did import buttons. So that's another really cool, nice TypeScript check that it's adding there for us. Now, this next one is going to look a little bit odd, but it's actually catching up with JavaScript support that we've had for this. And I'll explain why this is actually being added at the end here. But what you'll see is it's arbitrary module identifiers. What this allows us to do is if I do something like import, what I can actually do in here is let's say I put this emoji here. I'm going to import this as wow, like so. And we're going to import that from dot slash wow. Now, what you may notice is TypeScript 5.5 absolutely hates this. And I could do something like, let's say, const test. And that's going to equal wow, like so. And you can see that it's just not having a fun time with any of this. It doesn't like any of this. It can't find the modules or anything or the identifiers. If I paste this over into TypeScript 5.6 now, what you notice is it loves it and it's absolutely fine with it. And if we hover over wow, you should see that it has imported it correctly and it has the type of subscribe, something you should definitely do. The reason for this is it's allowing arbitrary module identifiers now. So if I go into the wow.ts file, you'll see what I've done is I've got a const which has the value of subscribe here. And then I'm actually exporting that as an arbitrary module identifier. And then on the import side of things, we can use that same arbitrary identifier and then we can rename it in JavaScript here. Now, if you're wondering what this is all for, this is actually really helpful if you're doing something in Wasm and it's great for language interoperability. The actual PR that requested this, the example they gave is something like this in Wasm. This is the pattern they use for Wasm, whereas in JavaScript, obviously we use a pattern like this. So this is going to allow you to actually import those files properly. The next feature is they've added way more support for iterator helpers and also some built-in iterator types. If we go into TypeScript 5.5 here and I paste in this code, what you can see is we've actually got an iterator or a generator here for positive integers. So this is going to generate us a positive integer every time we go for it. And that's just going to add one to the integer every time we take from it. So what you can see here is we've got the positive integers. If I now go down into my TypeScript 5.5 code, if I try and use this, you'll see we only get next return and throw. Now, JavaScript actually added support for all of the array helper methods onto iterators like this. So we go over to TypeScript 5.6 now. If I paste this over there, what you'll notice is we actually have support now. If I go positive integers like so, and then we press the dot, that all of them come up now, and we're going to have the TypeScript support for them. Alongside this, they've also added the support for the things like dot entries, dot values, and things like that. So what we're seeing on the left here is this dot entries here was an iterable iterator, but it doesn't know what this type dot map is on top of that. But then in TypeScript 5.6, we have dot entries dot map, and it's not throwing a type error as it knows that that method can be run on this iterator now. And lastly, in these confusing iterators here, the last great one they've added is that strict built-in iterator check. Now, what this does, if I paste in an iterator here, and this one is going to make something uppercase, what you'll notice is there's actually a few errors in here. We have an iterator of string. Now, normally you'd actually type this like this as any would be the default here. So if I go ahead and save this, what you'll see is we're trying to make everything we put in here as a string to make it uppercase, but we're actually doing value dot two uppercase here. And we have a lowercase C when this should actually be an uppercase C like this, but it's not throwing any error. And also it's not doing a check for if value is undefined. And the reason for that is value here is any. Now, when we have an iterator before, the T return actually gets set to any. What this means is the value type here is technically string or any, and because of type widening, it's just gonna get set to any. Now, if we move this over to TypeScript 5.6, it's not gonna immediately fix our problem. What we can use now is a new helper type, which is built-in iterator return like so. And then when we're in strict mode, or we have built-in iterator or strict built-in iterator return turned on, what this is gonna do is set this to undefined instead of any. What that means is the type widening doesn't really occur on this, so we instead we get string or undefined and that way first we can check if our value is undefined and then when we know it's not undefined we can now get all of those typescript helpers 
So it would actually throw us an error on that misspelling of two uppercase there. And we're going to get all of the things we could get on a string here. So all of the methods and we'll have that proper type support there. So as I said, some really good help for TypeScript iterators there and just catching up with some of the JavaScript iterator features as well. Now, this next one is a behavior change for TypeScript and that is it's going to check your overrides properly. So what we have here is we have a class of base and that has that symbol of bar there that we're defining as a method. And then we also have a class of derived. Now, what you may notice is I'm using override on foo here and TypeScript isn't throwing an error, despite the fact that override, you need it to be on the base class, but we don't have this foo on the base class. We only have bar like so. Let's go ahead and copy this over to TypeScript 5.6. And what you'll see is it's gonna correctly now give us an error here. And it says this member cannot have an override modifier because it's not declared in the base class base. So it's telling us we can't override something that isn't declared in here. So if we actually wanted to get this to work correctly, we would just copy this up to there. And now we can successfully override it and TypeScript's gonna remove that error for us. So another really nice, super helpful check and quality of life update. Now this next one is quite interesting and that is the no check option. If I come over to my terminal here and I do mpx tsc, so I try compile my code, it's not gonna compile because we have a load of errors. Now previously it would assume that you're essentially doing no emit on error, but now what we actually have is we can do mpx tsc and then we can do no check like so and it's still gonna compile, but it's just not gonna do any type checking. Now, if you're wondering why you'd want this, you may iterate in this stage here. So you're iterating on your code and you want it to compile. And then you may also have a separate terminal open doing TSC and then no emit that's doing your type checking for you. Previously, what some people have done is we've used something like TSX or TS node, and then we do MPX TSC and then no emit so we can get the type errors out in a terminal as well. This is another cool feature that they've added to the TypeScript terminal. And this also has a few other usages as well, which they mention in that blog post. So that is all of the features that I wanted to show you in VS Code there, but let's quickly go over a few more from that blog post. You see here we have that no check option that I just showed you, and it does mention doing this no check and no emit there. But it does say also you may want to specify a separate build info file path if you are going to be using this. But it also says down here as well that it's worth noting that no check is actually a bit of a misnomer, as it does have to do some type checking to actually get out your declaration files. But then as it says, this is a lot lazier than a full type check. Another cool one is this allow dash dash build with intermediate errors. Essentially where this is helpful is maybe you have a project B that's relying on project A, but you want to start updating your TypeScript types in project B and you don't have control over project A. What you can actually do is just start updating project B on the new TypeScript and new version, and you can still let it build with these intermediate errors as it says. So it's quite a cool feature there, especially if you're working on a lot of projects or you're in a company where different teams work on different projects and you have to wait for someone to update this one, for example. Another cool one that we'll probably feel the impact of but won't have to implement ourselves is region prioritized diagnostic errors. Essentially before VS Code would have to send off the full file to TypeScript and say check this for errors and then it would render the errors for you. Now with these region prior prioritized diagnostics, VS Code actually already has support for this. Essentially it's just going to try send off a region and type check that. You can actually see here in testing on their own checker.ts, a full semantic diagnostic response took 330. Uh, 30 milliseconds but then in the new version with that region it took only 143 milliseconds so if you're in a large file in typescript in vs code maybe this will help speed up some of those type checks for you Another really cool one if you've worked in a mono project is search ancestor configuration files for project ownership. Essentially what this is, is if we had a structure like this before in one of our files, where say you want a TS config for your test files, you want a TS config for everything else in the source folder here. And then you also have a master TS config here, sort of at the top level of the project that just in this master TS config, you're just referencing the other ones. Previously, if you use something like VS Code, it would actually just find this TS config here and consider that sort of the parent one for the project. And it would have essentially go for the first TS config it found. Now TypeScript's gonna have that sort of check where it looks for the highest ancestor within your project. Previously to fix this, what we have been doing is something like this, where you actually just rename your tsconfig to something besides tsconfig.json, but now you don't actually have to do this pattern if you don't want to for your sort of main tsconfig there. And then the last bit, they have some notable behavioral changes here. And I actually mentioned one of these earlier, which was this one down here of that override checks on computed properties. Now I'll leave a link to this blog post again in the description down below if you wanna check these other ones out, but those were the ones that I thought were worth mentioning. 
So there we go, that is TypeScript 5.6 and the features that I'm really excited for. I really like when TypeScript adds some really nice features like this as it just makes you more confident in your code and you know you're catching silly errors nice and quickly before they actually get to any sort of production or even running in your dev environment. And this way you can focus on the code that actually matters and fixing a lot harder bugs that are a bit more complex than just something like a missed bracket or type errors like I showed you in this video. If you want more of these, please do subscribe. And if you wanna watch the video on the TypeScript 5.6, 5.5 update maybe you've been away for a while check out this video and if you want to see the video that youtube is recommending watch this one as always please subscribe and thank you very much for watching